After rescuing the deputy of Prim, we're told that Prim needs a new sheriff. Otherwise, the powder gangers are going to continue to raid the place. Now, there are three different ways we can find a sheriff for the town of Prim. I'm going to cover those in an upcoming video on Prim and the Bison Steve Hotel. But one of those options is to convince the NCR to take over the town of Prim, protect it, but levy a high tax on its people. To talk to the NCR about this, we need to go to a small NCR camp across the road just west of Prim. There we find a couple of NCR tents and NCR soldiers milling about, and in one of the tents, we find Lieutenant Hayes. Yeah? If the NCR isn't here to defend the people of Prim, what exactly are you guys doing here, Hayes? We were sent out here to hold back the tide of convicts from the correctional facility. As you can probably tell, we aren't doing the kind of job we could be doing. Hayes, Prim is in dire need of some real law. We know Prim is a great strategic point, and we aren't blind to the needs of the town, but we're barely holding our own against the powder gangers. We don't have the guns or the personnel needed to carry out our mission, much less take on defending this town as well. All right, well, what do you need from me to convince you guys to take over protecting this town? What we need more than anything is bodies. If we had just one more squad, we could easily install a sheriff and still handle our primary objective of protecting the interstate south of here. If you'd like to see the NCR include protection of Prim and its duties, then you'll have to get some more troops up here. Knight at Mojave Outpost may be able to help. Lieutenant Hayes sends us to talk to a man named Knight at the Mojave Outpost. The Mojave Outpost is the most southwesterly point in the entire Mojave wasteland. To find it, we must follow the road west, and it's here where we find a car graveyard. The road leading up the hill west out of Nevada is strewn with the remains of vehicles owned by people who were fleeing for their lives 200 years ago when the bombs dropped. Here we see first-hand evidence the kind of congestion and chaos that the apocalypse caused to everyday people just trying to live their lives in the Mojave. We see a few caravanners walking up the road. That's because the Mojave Outpost is a big caravan pit stop where caravanners can rest, water their Brahmin, and get some drinks before going on their way. The outpost connects California to Nevada. It was one of the first places that the NCR took over when they moved into Nevada, and it's here where the road diverges, going north to New Vegas and Prim, and east to Nipton and Camp Searchlight. But the most striking feature of the Mojave outpost is a giant megalithic statue at the very top of the hill. Here we find a statue made from scrap metal Metal, depicting two men shaking hands. The plaque on the ground beneath the statue gives us more details. It tells us that in the year 2271, the Desert Rangers of Nevada and the Rangers from the New California Republic met at this very spot to sign the Ranger Unification Treaty. With this treaty, the Desert Rangers of Nevada agreed to become absorbed into the NCR in exchange for the NCR's protection of the Hoover Dam, New Vegas, and Southern Nevada from the forces of Caesar's Legion. There is not a lot of information about the Desert Rangers of Nevada before they joined the NCR, but they are mentioned even as far back as Fallout 1. In Fallout 1, we meet a man named Tycho inside the scum pit of Junktown. He tells us that he came to California from Nevada, and if we use the question box to ask him about the Rangers, he tells us a little bit more about them. He used to be one of their members. His father was a Nevada Ranger, and their heritage stretches far back, even to the days of the old Texas Rangers. The Desert Rangers of Nevada protected the people from hostile forces, and Rangers were keen survivalists with excellent combat skills in ranged rifles. The Fallout New Vegas strategy guide tells us, however, that by the time the NCR entered Nevada, the numbers of the Nevada Desert Rangers had been dwindling. They found Caesar's Legion to be a bit too much for them. And so when the NCR arrived, they gladly agreed to become absorbed by the army, as long as the NCR agreed to protect the people of the Mojave. As we walk underneath the statue, the first man we meet is a man named Sergeant Kilborn. Coming from the north? Must be crazy to brave those roads. What is this place, Kilborn? Outpost. Mojave Outpost. Watching a lot of nothing feels like a big Brahmin pen for caravans. They've been stopped for a while, waiting for the roads north to clear. Or the clearance papers to go through. Looks like you've walked away, so if you need to shake the dust off, head to the barracks at the bars there. Not much, but better than nothing. What are these statues of? Those two? Represents unification. 
Mostly good for shade. Won't do much else when the Legion reaches us. Is there any work around here? Nothing I know of. But if you've come from the north means you can travel freer than most around here. Might check the barracks. Someone might need you to hoof it somewhere. Just be careful you go up on the roof. Got a sniper watching the road. If your gear's in need of repair, HQ's also worth checking out. Talk to Major Knight, he can help. Provided you got a pen and plenty of ink. So one of the reasons we find so many caravanners here is because trade has been bogged down by the Legion and by the NCR's own bureaucracy. The Legion is making the roads inhospitable for caravanners, which has been harming trade, and all the paperwork that the NCR requires is making trade slow. Now before the war, the Mojave outpost used to be a military checkpoint. We find a big sign that says, prepare to stop, right next to some Brahmin pens that the caravanners use to the south. At first I thought this might have been a toll booth, but the New Vegas strategy guide tells us that it was a military checkpoint, which makes a lot of sense because the pre-war military had a curfew in effect and had been deployed to maintain order when the bombs dropped. Here we find a bunch of cars still stopped at the checkpoint with the bars down, frozen in time by the Holocaust. The NCR has a strong presence here. We even find some NCR veteran rangers milling about. And at the far western end of this road is a gate that we can't unlock. It says it requires a key, but there is no key that unlocks this gate. This road leads out of Nevada and into California. Many NPCs that we meet in this game will walk this way when they no longer serve a purpose. For example, Jacqueline and Tom, whom we meet in a gunfight concerning Sunset Star bottle cap, will walk this way and pass through this gate into California and disappear from the game forever. Even some of our companions, if we anger them and they leave our company, will walk here to the Mojave Outpost and exit this gate out of Nevada. Now the outpost has two main structures gated off with a very tall barbed wire gate. Heading behind one of the main buildings, we find a big picnic area where the caravanners sit to have their meals. But it was about now that it began to rain, so I decided to go inside the larger building to seek shelter. This is the headquarters to the Mojave outpost. Inside we find an office space run by the very man we came here to meet, the bureaucratic officer, Major Knight. Caravan, citizen, pilgrim, or... Now his response is identical no matter how we answer this question, except if we use our positive NCR reputation to say that we came here as an NCR soldier. Reinforcements? About time we got some more hands around here. Just need something for the logbook, keeping tabs on traffic throughout the outpost. Although mostly just in, not out these days. If you're looking for the commanding officer, he's in the back. Although, he's got a lot on his plate, so if you speak with him, keep it short. Also, if you need any gear checked, we can get you up and running again. Once you fill out the work orders and sign for the parts, of course. Pleasure to meet you, Major Knight, but I came here to talk with you about Prim. Prim? Hayes units are stationed up there. We're having problems with some of the NCRCF convicts. What can I help you with? Well, Major, Prim has seen better days. It has. It was a promising trade town before the escape at the correctional facility. Lost a good bit of money at the Vicky and Vance. Hayes can't protect Prim and its people by himself. He's undermanned, and he's requesting some additional support. I'd like to help, but we can't spare any more units. We have to maintain a minimum headcount at the outpost. Orders from the West. And we can either leave defeated or we can pass a barter check to convince him that having Prim as a trade route under the NCR control would help the West. I see the wisdom in that. I'll radio for a unit to head up to Prim and offer some additional support. Choosing this option locks out the two other options for getting a sheriff for Prim, so we would only choose this if we really believed that the NCR should control Prim. But since we're here at the Mojave Outpost, let's see what else we can learn about the place. Major, can you tell me more about the outpost? NCR border guard duty mostly. It's our job to make sure the caravans can move safely along I-15 and Highway 95. Not the best posting or assignment, but it beats being sent east or patrolling the Colorado. Legion's pretty thick there. Now, Major Knight likes men, and if we play a male courier, and if we have the confirmed bachelor perk, we have the option to flirt with him. You can say, now you didn't tell me your name. Oh, uh, Knight. You must not be from around here. If so, doesn't do to get too friendly. All three of these options have the same result. What, is there something wrong with asking your name? This isn't the Republic. 
Oddly enough, Legion's a little more forgiving about... friendships. Out here it's not as accepted. Not that I mind being friends, it's just being open about it in the outpost. Well, I have to work here. Oh, I didn't realize the NCR were so spineless. Now wait a minute, Republic's a sight better than... other alternatives. Women are serving here after all, the rest... well, might take some time. And they're more accepting back west, like I said. Forget it then, you're a waste of time. Wait, wait a minute, look. Some things in the NCR aren't ideal, but I want to help. So, is that a no? You don't want to be friends, or...? I... would. Perhaps some other time. When my orders take me to Vegas, perhaps. Wish things were different, but might take some time. However, I have a female courier here, so instead we can say, Tell me a bit more about yourself, Knight. Me? I'm Knight. Major Knight. I've been stuck here dealing with these caravans for ages now, but somebody's got to do it. So what, the Mojave Outpost isn't exciting enough for you? It ain't so bad. If Caesar's Legion decides to push west through Nipton, old Mojave Outpost here will be the front line. Well, as an NCR soldier, I'd like to help. Is there anything I can do around here? Help? Oh, well, you could speak to Ranger Jackson. He might have something for you. He sort of runs things around here. Mostly ends up sending reports back west that aren't filled with the best news. Additionally, Major Knight has access to the NCR's ability to repair your items. All right, then. Just sign here, here, and here. He has a pretty high repair skill, which can come in handy for those of us not specced into repair. And when done, we can explore the rest of this outpost. My favorite feature are the propaganda posters on the wall directly behind the Major. NCR Trooper, you bring democracy to this land. The Legion awaits at the gates of hell, and the NCR is gonna send them in. People of New Vegas, this is your friend. He fights for your freedom. These posters all imitate some real-world propaganda posters that we've found in pre-war America, and they are lovely. I wish I had them for my own house. This headquarters is an administrative building, and it looks like one. We find filing, cabinets, paper, and paperwork everywhere. There are some office desks in the back, with terminals and typewriters left over from the Great War. Heading down the hallway, we find a small bathroom to the right, NCR soldiers wandering the halls, and another office space directly to the left. At the end of the hallway turning left, we find a supply room, and the room against the eastern wall is a lounge area. We find a couple of chairs, a refrigerator, and a big countertop for coffee. This is where Ranger Jackson tends to hang out, but he does sometimes patrol the rest of the headquarters. We can track him down to see if there's anything we can do to help. Looks like we got a new visitor in the old Brahmin pen. Not many people coming here in a hurry, only passing through. And if you're passing through, you picked a bad time. Road north has gone to hell, and if I let a caravan through, they won't make it. You sure seem like you have enough soldiers, Ranger Jackson. Soldiers, no. Recruits, yes. And the Mojave Outpost has been ordered to have a standing force at the NCR perimeter at all times. So sending anyone out reduces the outpost's numbers, and would be in direct violation of my orders from back west. Is the NCR sending more troops your way? Sending more troops, yes. To reinforce the outpost, no. Troops head through here on their way to McCarran, or to the front lines at Forlorn Hope. Or they're on leave, on their way to New Vegas to piss away their pay. All of them, passing through. Ah, oh, you sound frustrated. Frustrated? No, I have my orders. Signed and approved all the way up the chain from Kimball. And I understand the reasons. The outpost isn't a Legion target, yet. Not like Vegas or the Dam. But if the caravans get choked here, that's gonna bite NCR hard. Anyway, didn't mean to talk your ear off. Some days, just feel like more requisition forms and daily reports come across my desk than results. Now if we have no affiliation with the NCR, we can say, Hey, is there anything I can do to help? Help? Now look, I appreciate... Uh, you know what? Yes, I could use the help. And you look like you can handle yourself. But if we have a good NCR reputation, we can say, Sir, I am here to assist. Well, about time we got a soldier, and not a recruit. You look like you've seen some action. I need to get the caravans moving again. That means clearing a path north. There's too much crawling the asphalt up the road to allow it. Sounds like a deal. Thanks, I appreciate it. Come back here when you're done. I might accidentally lose some supplies to pay you with. With the headquarters explored, we can step outside. It was then that the rain decided to clear up, revealing a bright and sunny day. The nearby building must be the barracks. 
Heading inside, we see a bartender running her shop and restaurant. This is Lacey. New face in the outpost. Must have come from the north. So, what do you have? What can you tell me about this outpost, Lacey? Not too much. A lot of caravans going nowhere. A lot of troopers going nowhere, too. A few prospectors here and there, but they don't do more than stink up the place. Everybody's backed up here. You'd think it'd be good for business, but most of the traders are tight with the caps, even the larger caravan outfits. Any work for me around here? Work around here? Might check with Jackson in the main building, or ghost up on the roof above, but watch out. She's, well, she's kind of a bitch. Don't tell her I said that, though. Might take a bullet some night when I'm going to the latrine. And Lacey is a merchant. Take a look. She has much more than food and beverages. She has weapons, ammunition, a bunch of great stuff. And she has quite a few caps. Look at her inventory. Over 7,000 caps. Making her a great person to go to to get rid of those gold bars from the Sierra Madre. She's also a caravan player. Would you like to play a game or two, Lacey? What, caravan? All right. I'll give it a go. Haven't exactly got much of a line of folks to serve. Ah, but sadly, I don't have 30 cards. Never fear, ladies and gentlemen, at some time, I'll do a video dedicated to the game Caravan. But for now, let's continue exploring this canteen. Sitting on a bar stool surrounded by empty bottles of whiskey sits a pretty young woman drowning her sorrows. This is Cass. She's an important character to New Vegas and a potential companion. I'm not going to talk with her now because she deserves a dedicated series of videos, which I'm in the process of producing. So we're going to skip her for now, but never fear, I will tell her entire story. Here in the canteen, we find a lot of NCR troops, prospectors, and caravanners. Going down the hallway, we find a rather rich larder filled with all sorts of grilled meats and bags of flour and yeast. A kitchen in the corner. And in the next room over, we find the barracks. On the walls, we find even more wonderful propaganda posters. And as promised, even if we're not an NCR soldier, we can sleep on these beds. It's good to see that the NCR is giving rest and relief to the weary. Now, many of the people whom we've talked with have talked about an inhospitable, angry woman named Ranger Ghost, who stands at her post atop one of the buildings. We find a ramp that leads up there, and sure enough, we find Ranger Ghost. Her nickname is not Ghost for any supernatural reasons, but instead because she's so incredibly pale. I do have a mod installed altering her appearance, but even in the base game, she's pale. The New Vegas Strategy Guide describes her as being particularly pallid. Heading on over, we can introduce ourselves. You a courier? If so, this might be your lucky day. If you don't mind walking a bit. And your eyes are good. Well, that depends, Ranger Ghost. What's the pay? The pay? The pay is a good goddamn thanks from the heart of the Republic. Just shitting you with the NCR line. Done wonders for morale around here. President Kimball keeps saying getting shot at is its own damn reward. Do this job for me, though. I'll do what I can. People know I hate most everyone, so if I put in a word for you, that's gold. Now, all of these options inquiring about the work leads to the same response. The only one with unique dialogue is if we use our NCR reputation to say, I'm a soldier and I'm here to assist. Hmm. Maybe Jackson got some additional soldiers after all. Didn't take you for a trooper at first. You seem a little livelier than most. All right. If you're here to assist, good. That's what I want to hear. What's the problem, Ranger Ghost? I think there's trouble in Nipton. No traffic from there on the roads. And while I can explain that away, the smoke from the town I can't. I'm sure it's been hit. What I need to know is if they survived it. Might be powder gangers with all that smoke in the air. If there's anybody left, they'd be in the Nipton Town Hall. Go there. Check it out. Let me know what you find. Well, why don't you go check it out? Got my post. Don't think I wouldn't go, too. If troubles hit Nipton, town's got enough camping spots to rack up some easy kills. Not about to have Jackson bust my ass again, though. Even if I came back with Caesar's head... Rather be sitting here than in a cell. Now, if we've never been to Nipton, we can say, sure, I'll do it. Listen, I don't want you getting killed for this. So if you head there and run into trouble, I'm asking for eyes and ears, not your life. All right? But if we have already been to Nipton, and if we've seen the devastation that Volpe Zinculta and his legionary thugs have done there, we can simply tell Ranger Ghost that we've already been there and we've seen that the Legion has attacked the town and turned it into a graveyard. Legion this far west? You're fucking kidding me. That's not outside the border. They're moving in, and fast. Nipton wasn't the most friendly town, but... <sighs> All right, thanks for checking on that. Wish it set my mind at ease. Now I'm more on edge than ever. Did you have any friends there, Ranger? In Nipton? Hell no. Town was a shithole, asking to be burned. Just not by Legion. 
Nobody deserves that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be the bearer of bad news. Unless you burn the town, don't take blame that's not due. Things are going to get uglier before the year's out. Well, thanks for hoofing it there and back, even if it was bad news. Wish we could spare the troops to go hunting, but orders are to stay put. Fucking Mojave's going to hell, and all I can do is sit here and watch. Is there anything more you can tell me about this outpost? Not much to tell. One of the worst posts in the NCR if you're looking to be anything more than a babysitter. Full up here, but just enough so we can't send out patrols. Gotta maintain a standing force. Jackson's orders. NCR's orders. Can't spare men for patrols or escorts, so caravans are backing up here like a Brahmin with a bottle in its ass. Mm, typical NCR bullshit. Have you heard any news coming from the West? Kimball's Kimball. Not sure which end is his ass or his head. Caravan families are causing trouble. Big circle getting tense. The usual. Look, you want gossip? Go to the bar downstairs and listen to a whole lot of nothing. Me? I gotta keep watch, then fill out the daily log. Well, it's important to note that most of the soldiers we've met here, the rangers, the grunts, and even some of the officers, are really tired of the NCR's inefficiency. They're just as frustrated with the bureaucracy as many of the civilians whom the NCR are protecting. The NCR is an interesting faction. We have everyday people who have joined up to have a positive impact on the world, and they more or less succeed. They imprison the lawless, they give aid to the refugees, they encourage and embrace free trade. Their greatest flaws are due to the inefficiencies of large bureaucracies. Bureaucracies that tend to appear as organizations get larger and larger. In effect, the NCR is more hamstrung by their own success than anything else. But to best help the Mojave outpost, we need to clear the roads. This will make it easier for caravanners and prospectors to reach important places of trade within the Mojave. Heading down the road past the pre-war vehicle graveyard, we see that the road dips down, where two roads at one point converged. There was an overpass that went over this road, but it has crumbled over time. This spot is one of the many spots where we can have random encounters with people who want to kill us. If we're hostile to the Legion, Legion assassins will appear here and open fire. Giant ants have also overrun this spot, and these are the creatures we need to kill to complete the quest. The nice thing about this geography is the legion and the ants have to go all the way around these big concrete barricades before they can reach us, giving us plenty of time to pick them off with our rifle. However, if your aim is poor like mine, they will eventually get to you, which makes for a pretty tough fight, especially if the legion is carrying SMGs. Come on! Now, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I've experienced a really frustrating bug, at least I think it's a bug, whereby if the mysterious stranger appears after he kills an enemy, if other enemies are alive, I get stuck in this cinematic camera angle where I can't move and yet my enemies can continue to fire on me. Due to this, I almost died. I only survived by consuming a slew of stim packs when I was released from this camera angle and I was then able to finish off this final legionary. We can then use the geography to easily pick off all of these ants. Heading up top, we can peer over and snipe them off one by one. When the ants are dead, we get an alert telling us that the quest has been fulfilled, but while we're here, we can explore some of the other points of interest nearby. Just off in the distance, down in the flats, we find an abandoned racetrack. This racetrack is infested with more of these giant ants because there's an ant mound in the middle of the racetrack, but it's an interesting location because here on the road, we find a derelict fusion flea. These tiny little pre-war cars were used in racing. We find these fusion fleas in Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. Wouldn't it be wonderful to see a race of these fusion fleas spinning around in circle along this racetrack? Nearby is an abandoned camp. This is the Nipton Road pit stop, where we typically find members of the Viper Gang. But they're missing because I cleared them out earlier. However, they've got cardboard laid out, which we can use as beds, making it a handy little spot to rest if needed. Right next to this pit stop is an old 
old pre-war plane buried in the sand. I can't tell what kind of plane this is. I don't know if it was military or a passenger plane, but it is a unique object in this landscape. Heading north of the racetrack, we find the Ivanpa Dry Lake. Here we just find scorpions and other bugs. It's not remarkable in the game, but it's real world history is. Now these events happened after the divergence, so we don't know if this happened in Fallout lore, like in our real world, but in 2009, the world land speed record for a wind-powered vehicle was set here on this lake bed by the British vehicle Greenbird, which reached its peak speed at 126 miles per hour. This place is also of note because it was the location where an American mining company accidentally dumped hundreds of thousands of gallons of radioactive water. In the 1980s, the nearby Mountain Pass Rare Earth Mine began piping wastewater, which had come into contact with natural radioactive ore into this lake bed to evaporate. After a federal investigation, the company responsible was ordered to pay over $1.4 million in fines and was tasked with a cleanup. Again, we don't know if this happened in the Fallout world, but it's clear that the disposal of toxic radioactive material has a long... West of this point is the Nevada Highway Patrol Station. We typically find members of the Jackal Gang here, but they were missing when I arrived. The patrol station is more or less abandoned. We find a terminal here, but it's not active. The only thing of note is that it does have a jail cell. In the jail cell, we find mantises, which I've already killed, and the mantises are responsible for having killed a prospector. This prospector has nothing interesting on her body, but we do find a Sunset Sarsaparilla Star bottle cap lying next to her corpse. There's also a reloading bench here, and the containers in this building do not respawn, which makes this one of the unique places for impromptu player housing. As I left, one of the Jackal gang members happened to swing by, but he was easy work with my medicine stick. And just outside, we find two wonderful pre-war billboards, one advertising the Vicky and Vance Casino, which we can explore, actually. I'll save that for another video another day. And a billboard advertising the Corvega Atomic V8, another beautiful nuclear-powered pre-war vehicle. Many of the cars in the Fallout universe were nuclear-powered. I did an entire video dedicated to the vehicles of Fallout. If you're interested, you can check out that video here. We find another big billboard advertising Gamora, one of the more seedy casinos in New Vegas, which we will soon explore. And then right up the road, we find the Nipton Road Rest Stop. This was a Poseidon Energy refueling station, which is today in utter disrepair. On the wall in one of the abandoned garages, we find graffiti that says, Where's New Canaan anyway? This is a reference to the Honest Hearts DLC, which is the DLC I will be exploring next. Inside the general store, we find some minor loot. We find some bottle caps on a cash register, a locked gun cabinet where we can find a silenced pistol early in the game, and many containers to loot. This is also the location where Mayor Stein from Nipton had his secret stash, the stash he was putting together while he was planning his escape from Nipton. If you watched my video on Nipton, you already know how his plans turned out. But once we've completed the quest and we've explored the nearby area, we can head back to the Mojave outpost and tell Ranger Jackson of our success. Appreciate the help. Wish I had more work for you, but nothing else on the radar at the moment. Now, didn't you mention something of a reward before? No, I mentioned you might accidentally get supplied, and I meant it. Not allowed to contract mercenaries at the outpost. Still, a requisition form or two can get lost, and they're not gonna come check. So here you go. Just between us. Strictly off the books, just how I like it. Completing this quest is a great way to get a service rifle earlier in the game. We get two repair kits, 100 bottle caps, a nice stack of ammunition, and two caravan lunches. The food item is unremarkable for most gameplays, but if you're playing on hardcore mode, it's the most filling food in the game. Well, that and MREs. It removes 15 dehydration and 200 starvation. It's difficult to find in the game, but if your survival skill is high enough, you can craft these at a campfire or an electric hot plate. It's really only useful if you're planning to consume it, because the items used to craft it are individually worth more than the caravan lunch you ultimately produce so it's not worth selling once you make it. It's also the only food item that you can craft during the Dead Money DLC, since it's the only item made from pre-war food items. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of the Mojave Outpost, a place we find early in the game, but a place that really tells us a lot about the NCR, their struggles, their frustrations, their failures. But what are your thoughts on the Mojave Outpost? Were you as thrilled as I was to find yet another reference to early Fallout lore? And are you excited to learn more about Cass? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I read all of your comments, and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. I publish a new video six days a week on a wide range of Fallout topics spanning all of the games. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss my next Fallout video, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a t-shirt shop, folks. If you're interested in an Oxhorn or Fallout-inspired t-shirt, you can find a link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do, and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video. Thank you.